Tonight, one of these six people could be winning $50,000. But to do it, they must use everything they know about each other. It's Dog Eat Dog. And a very warm welcome. I'm Simone Kessel and this is Dog Eat Dog. Well, there's $50,000 leaving the building this evening, but who leaves with it will depend entirely on how much these six people know about each other. To give them a helping hand, we sent this lot away for a weekend where they could check each other out socially, mentally and physically. Tonight, they'll need to use everything they've learned to become $50,000 richer. So who will be tonight's top dog? Let's meet the team. Scottish Ross reckons his sense of humour makes him a bit like his fellow countryman Billy Connolly. Ross is a software tester who can always find time for a beer, a Baileys or a wine. <laughs> Having a party? Invite confident Matt. He's always on the dance floor first. Matt likes to move fast and used to work five part-time jobs at once, but has now settled on life as an account manager. Ashley loves beer, footy, cricket and his pet rabbit, Samantha. He used to be in the army, but decided on a career change and now works for the Defence Department. Patronise Gabrielle at your own risk. She can't stand condescending people, she hates cats and never wants to hear Billy Ray Cyrus sing Achy Breaky Heart again. <laughs> Gabrielle works as a project manager. Self-starter Nikki runs her own business and describes herself as a fruit loop. She thinks she's like HR Puff and Stuff because she's your friend when things get rough. Yes! Believe it or not, but some people mistake Teresa for Martina Hingis. She proudly works for the taxation department and says if she wins Dog Eat Dog, she'll be taking her parents on a holiday to New Zealand. Well, that's what our Super Six told us, but what things have they learnt about each other? Matt, Matt is uh, egotistical, he's just pretentious. I'm a family man, a heart of the W. A bear, you know, your big sort of cuddly homebody. I would say that I'm an absolutely outstanding showpiece who has irritated a lot of people. Nikki's a real princess. Ashley has the shakes. Yeah, Ashley shakes, and he was in the army, and uh, he used to be in, uh, in charge of shooting guns. <laughs> and he shakes. That's actually one of the, one of the better days. <laughs> Theresa is very much a try-hard. I'm proud to be a tax officer, collecting the revenue for the country. I, I found her incredibly boring. Uh, I'd say more like Dirk Diggler, only because he's good-looking, sharp dresser, and if you see me in the shower, you know why. <laughs> Ross talks very, very quickly, especially when he gets excited. I'm taking out the challenge, man. It's excellent. I've got a top of big man. Keep saying how good it is in Scotland. Go on home, Ross. And all the best. Cheerio. Oh, hi. This is how Dog Eat Dog works. In each round, I'll set you a challenge, and you must each nominate one opponent to take it on. Whoever gets the most nominations will face that challenge. If they fail, well, they're out of the game, and they must make their way over to the loser's bench, waving goodbye to all that cash. But if they succeed, well, it's time for revenge, because they can then send anyone who nominated them onto the loser's bench in their place. Pretty easy stuff? Good. Who's going to be our first victim this evening? Let's find out in our opening game that will put your word skills to the test. Think of this game as a crossword. Like a crossword, the player will be given clues. And using these clues, the chosen player must spell eight four-letter words that work both across and down. For example, if the clue for one down was throw, the answer would be hurl, because it correctly answers one down and works with two across. The chosen player will have 90 seconds to complete the square using all 16 letters. So, from what you've learnt of each other on the away day, who do you think would struggle most with our word challenge? Please make your choice now. The votes are in, but first, let's see what happened on the away day. 
Until now, only each individual contestant knows where they themselves came in our formal tests. We can now reveal that when it comes to a word challenge, anyone in the group could take it out, except perhaps Ashley, who was the group's only lowly performer. Taking line honours was the ever-confident Matt, with the trio of Nicky, Gabrielle and Ross hot on his heels. I did very well in the word skills compared to everyone else. You know, I topped the class. Well, I guess I can't do much more than that. The reason why I think I came last in words is because I think I got my spell checker on American at work. I very much have to check that when I get back home. Ashley would have to have no word ability. He loves you all. I found the words, the word tests and things very easy. I try to be articulate where I can, but generally I don't have this and that and that. Gabrielle definitely lacked in creativity in word. Don't underestimate. Don't underestimate. You stuck me out. Underestimate. Don't underestimate me. They didn't come out again. When it comes to word, I don't think they'll choose me. He's he's younger, and I think he just doesn't. Have, he's not very articulate. A few people have said that they think I'm articulate, so that might be a reason not to pick me. Don't underestimate me. I'm here to win. You think you've got it won? I'm gonna beat the lot of you. Let's reveal your votes. Starting with you, Ashley. Who have you voted for? Matt. Matt. Nikki. Teresa. Ross. Ashley. All right. Sorted bunch. Gabrielle. Ross. Okay. Uh, Matt. Nikki. So you all voted for each other. Teresa, it is up to you. Who is it? Ross. Ross. Scottish Ross. How are your uh, your crossword skills? Oh, fantastic, you know. No worries. Confident? <laughs> Very confident. Uh, just have to give it a, my best shot. And I'm sure I'll come out a winner. All right, then come with me. Let's see how you do. <laughs> Ross, remember you have just 90 seconds to correctly fill the square using the eight clues and 16 letters. All right? Yep. You ready? Yep. Good luck, Ross. Ross, your fight for survival starts now. Seconds, Ross. Uh, usually I'm not too bad, but on this occasion I got my one down in the three down position, so unfortunately I made a mess of it. Do you want to know the answers? Not particularly. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you, because <laughs> some viewers at home might want to know. Uh, across seeds is Pips, uh, Norwegian capital, Oslo. Uh, insult, slur, assess, test. And down we have send is post, island is isle, add is plus, Organise is sought. Easy now, isn't it? In hindsight, yes. In hindsight, yeah. Oh, well. So, uh, unfortunately, you're now out of the game and you're off to the losers' bench. One way ticket to losers' bill. That's all right. all right. Ladies and gentlemen, Ross. All right. Already 
Three, we're down to just five. Next up, someone's brawn's going to get a workout in the form of a three-metre-high mechanical climbing wall that we call The Rock. It's tough, it's nasty, and it's rarely beaten. But just maybe one of you can do it and edge closer to that $50,000. Find out if someone can next on Dog Eat Dog. is The Rock, a motorised climbing wall. To take a step closer to being crowned tonight's top dog, one of our five remaining contestants must beat it. And there's only one way to do it. Our chosen player must stay holding onto the rock face as it moves and tilts at various speeds and angles. And they must hang on for a gruelling 90 seconds. If they touch the ground, fall off or climb over the top, then it's game over and they will be off to the loser's bench. But if they succeed, they'll be able to send anyone who nominated them onto the loser's bench in their place. Pretty good incentive, huh? All right, who do you think will fail our physical challenge? Please make your choice now. The votes are in, but before we find out who's been nominated, let's see who got physical on the away day. Matt put in an all-conquering performance when it came to our physical tests, breezing through the high ropes, rock climbing and assault course. Topping the girls, but only just, was Teresa, who made quite an impression on the team with some unique high rope strategies. At the other end of the scale, a laid-back Ashley decided to work smarter, not harder, by employing his own cunning plan. Everyone has made comments about Ashley's physical nature, appearance, the fact she's a smoker. I actually don't smoke. I only took this up uh, for the away date, so you will think that I am a fat slum. Gabrielle's a big girl. Uh, I reckon she's got a problem with balance and, uh, and stamina. I think that physical endurance yesterday, I started to sort of say, oh, you know, well, I don't want to show through there. So I've left them guessing and good luck to them because they've got no chance. Nikki's a backstabbing, two-faced, I'm better than you. Well, you're not, Nikki. I, I believe Teresa did, had a, a fairly spectacular fall off the rope bridge. I was on the rock wall at the time and I thought there was an earthquake. That was my classic moment. She ran, ran flat out. Well, it was just it was so funny. And she just, ra just ran for it across. She, she thought she could get over the ladder. That's just, that's just insane. Physically, I blitzed them, blitzed all the girls, even beat some of the boys. Boy, did they hate it. If people find me really over the top, super arrogant, and I've run them up the wrong way, I'm not here to make friends, guys. I'm here to win 50 grand. <laughs> Fighting words there, Matt. All right, let's see how you've all voted. We'll start with you, Ashley. Gabrielle. All right, Nikki. Ashley. Gabrielle. Nikki. Matt. Ashley. Two for you, Ashley. Not looking so good. Teresa, who's it going to be? Matt. Ashley. You know, you had a few tricks up your sleeves on the away day. How do you think you'll go tonight? Uh, probably pretty ordinary, but let's see how we go. <laughs> Confident. Ashley prepares himself, remember that if he goes over the top or if any part of his body touches the floor, well, he'll be off to the loser's bench. And he has just 90 seconds to stay on the wall. Are you ready, Ashley? I'm ready. You ready? Take up your position, please. Keep going, I'd say. Just to give yourself a good start. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You ready? I'm ready. Good luck, Ashley. Thank you. Your fight for survival starts now. Off. What happened? Uh, I thought I did all right. <laughs> you know, 
know, you still had a bit of time to spare. Oh. Your feet are kind of scrambling and, what, you couldn't grip onto it, or...? Oh, no, I think it was a combination of gripping, moving my feet, my hands, and... Well, it seems that Nicky and Matt were right. They can breathe a little easier now. Nah, and... they'll get theirs a bit later on, someone. Yeah, well, for now, Ashley, you're out of the game and off to the loser's bench. Ladies and gentlemen, Ashley. down and four doggies left. My, you all look a little smug, don't you? After having survived the rock. But that won't be for long. Up next, someone's math skills will come under some very heavy fire. And if they can't cut it, it could cost them $50,000. Whose number's up? That's next on Dog Eat Dog. I would really hate if Ashley walked away with my dough simply because of the, the dislike he's taken towards me. Piss me off, basically, Matt. You just frustrate me. Well, I do not want Nikki and I do not want Matt to win. That's so easy. Teresa. I think Teresa's just very immature in, in, in her attitude towards the world, basically. Ross, don't want him to win the $50,000. It's Australian money. Should stay in here. these four could leave tonight with 50,000 in cold hard cash. Unfortunately, one of them will also fall victim to our next challenge and will have to wave goodbye to that big money. Let's find out who that will be in a game that tests maths power. I will read out a starting number. In this example, 25. I will then read out a calculation. For example, multiply by 11. The answer is 275 which becomes the new starting number. So if the next question was, subtract 35, the answer would be 240, because 275 minus 35 is 240. The chosen player cannot pass and must complete all 10 calculations with inside 90 seconds. So guys, who do you think will fail this maths challenge? Please make your choice now. Well, they voted, but first, let's see what calculations were made on the away day. Contestants, be warned. Steer well clear of Brainy Matt for this challenge. The clear winner of the group, Matt's math score was only two marks away from a perfect result and a new dog-eat-dog -dog record. A few rungs down was Teresa and Gabrielle, who came middle of the pack, with Nikki a clear last place. Um, I actually came in last, but... I was a bit of a doofus. I think Nicky may crack under the pressure a little bit. Didn't realise that there was another page. <laughs> Gabrielle was a pretty honest girl. Teresa patronising, can't stand people being patronising, like, you tried your best and that was fantastic. But I think has the potential to be a bit of a backstabber. Teresa should have been a boy. If I had to spend too much time with her, I'd just kill her. Nicky's face in that water was very tempting. I asked Matt to stick, it, stick his hand on her head and keep her under for a little while. Maths I did very well, it's probably my strong suit and I, I fully expected to come first, which I did. I think Matt loves, loves himself better, more than he loves anyone else. He answered all these questions, he was great, but can you do it under the lights and the camera? That'll be the thing. Let's reveal who is going to have to handle it under the pressure of the lights and the cameras. Nikki, let's start with you. Matt. Gabrielle. Nikki. Matt. Nikki. Nikki. Yeah. Uh, Teresa, who is it? Nikki. Nikki. Yeah. Hey, Nikki. I'm guessing you're pretty confident. I'm out there. Woohoo! Come down here and join me. Remember, you cannot pass, and you've got 10 calculations to make inside 90 seconds. All right? Fabulous. Good to hear, Nikki. Best of luck. All right. Your fight for survival starts now. Multiply by 37. 370. Correct. Subtract 230. 140. Correct. Multiply by 3. 
420. Correct. Plus 130. 550. Correct. Minus 220. 330. Correct. Add 217. 547. Correct. Subtract 142. 405. Correct. Times 3. 1215. Correct. Minus 235. 235 is 970. Incorrect. 235 makes it 200. Take off 35 is 15. Take off. Take off 20 is 1,000. Is 980. Correct. Divided by 98. 10. Wow, what can I say? You kept your, uh, your math skills well hidden, didn't you? Year 8 homework has helped me immensely. <laughs> Nikki, you had time to spare. You all right? Fabulous. OK, I'm just going to remind you that on Dog Eat Dog, we like to do this thing called revenge. OK? Revenge. How does that sound to you? Sweet baby. It's sweet. <laughs> Now, you can either vote for Gabrielle, Matt, or Teresa. Take your time, because it's all about revenge. Smell it, feel it, go with it. Who are you going to eliminate? I'm going to eliminate my toughest competition, Teresa. <laughs> Thanks. Come as a surprise? No, not at all. Nikki and I uh, got on fairly well in the uh, training day. We were both good competitors. She did well and I wish her well. Got anything to say, Nikki? She was very tough, very like me, very competitive. So time to get rid of her? Absolutely. You're out of the game, you have to lose the bet and you are back in the game. Three left. Matt, a few nervous moments there. Oh, absolutely, Simone. I thought I was gone for sure. Well, you're all only two steps away from being tonight's top dog and playing for the big money. But there can only be one. Our observation challenge is set to claim another victim, leaving someone's $50,000 dreams in ruins. It's hard, it's unfair, and it's next on Dog Eat Dog. away from finding out who's got what it takes to be tonight's top dog. Over on the losers bench we have the victims of our maths, word and physical challenges, all eagerly awaiting their chance to seek their ultimate revenge. Our observation puzzle is set to give the losers some more company, so let's find out who that will be as we play Dog Eat Dog. on the monitor and the challenge is to match it to one of these 16 flags on this panel. If the images match, the background goes white and a new image appears. If they make an incorrect choice, the screen goes red, locking the player out for two seconds before they can make another attempt. The player cannot pass and will have 90 seconds to make all 16 matches. So... Who would you like to nominate for this observation challenge? Please make your choice now. The votes are in, but before we find out who's been nominated, let's see what was observed on the away day. Our observation tests show numero uno Matt once again top of the class. Lucky to be on the loser's bench and out of the line of fire is Ross, who could be put under observation after completing our children's puzzle in a mind-numbing nine minutes. <laughs> also hinting that an observation challenge could be a do-or-die struggle was the duo of Nikki and Gabrielle. 
Uh, I thought I had really good memorising techniques and I missed some of the big picture stuff. I'm trying to remember all the things in my mind. I got the piece of paper and then it was still another 30 seconds and things are falling out of my mind. I can see them go. My observation skills are very good. I came out on top in that test. That's because I'm a very logical person. I put a pattern to things and that enables me to remember it. Matt, Matt is a sexist. And I did not like the comments that he made early on that there was no competition here in the girls. It was only the guys and I think he was probably quietly surprised that actually it was probably more some of the girls that were his greatest competition. Gabrielle, we haven't heard from you in a while. Out of Nikki and Matt, who would you like to see next on the losers bench? Matt. Why? I think if it went head to head that I'd go okay with Nikki, but I'm not sure about Matt. And he's been number one on every challenge, obviously, when and we're And he away. knows that he's number one. He keeps and telling he you that he's, he's number one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, Matt is gone. All right. Okay, let's see how you've uh, all voted. Nikki. Gabrielle. Gabrielle. Nikki. Hmm, a nice tactical vote. Matt, it's all up to you. And it's not good. Gabrielle. Gabrielle. How are your observation skills? Very good. Very good? Yes. Well then, come with me. Let's see how you do. <laughs> Gabrielle, you cannot pass and you have 90 seconds to make all 16 matches, all right? Yep. Best of luck. Thank you very much. Gabrielle, your fight for survival starts now. Wow, oh, you were fantastic. Wasn't she doing good? Yeah. yeah. What more can you say? It was harder than I thought it would be. I actually thought I'd get that. Mm -hmm. I thought you were going to go, Matt. <laughs> I thought so too. But, but now, Gabrielle, it looks like you've got to go. Yes. It does, do. really, doesn't it? Mm, bye. Goodbye. Off to the loser's bed. <laughs> then. There were two. Matt, how are your nerves? Nerves are pretty frayed at the moment, Simon. I, I thought I was uh, gone there for a while, then I thought I was, I was home, and then I thought I was gone again, and then luckily I stayed in the game. And uh, you're not going to let Nikki stand in the way of your $50,000, are well, you? Well, I wouldn't be sitting here if I was prepared to do that. <laughs> Nikki, do you feel threatened by your opposition? Not at all. I've got the unfair advantage. I've been out there, I know how it is, and I'm going to whip his butt. <laughs> Only one of you can be tonight's top dog and play for that $50,000. To do it, you'll need to beat the grid, a game that requires cat-like agility, steel trap memory and extremely cool nerves. Who'll snap under the pressure? Find out next on Dog Eat Dog.
six hopefuls all battling it out to become this evening's top dog. Now we find the losers bench littered with four victims who have tried but failed in their quest to win and all that remains are these two. Matt, Nikki, they must now settle who's top dog around here by going head to head in a game we call the grid. So come with me and I'll show you how it works. You each have a grid, and all you have to do is to cross it one square at a time and make it to your finishing podium. But there's only one path across the grid, and your job is to find out where it is. When you step on a correct square, it will turn white. You then have a chance to find the next square in the route, and you can move diagonally. If you make a wrong move, your lights go out and they will send you back to the start, and you must begin again. The route is the same for both of you, so how much attention you, uh, you pay to your opponent is completely up to you. However, you can only remain on a square for 15 seconds at a time. First to the end podium wins and we'll be playing for $50,000 in cash, but don't let that worry you, all right? Are you ready? Take up your positions, please. Matt, Nikki, best of luck. Thanks. Your fight for survival starts now. Get your breath back. <laughs> Matt, so close yet so far. You were watching Nikki there for a while, weren't mm -hmm. you? Yep. And then you finally got the hang of it. Mm -hmm. What was happening? 
<coughs> Look, my memory's not that great for those sort of patterns. I figured if I followed her until about halfway, maybe just over, then I'll take my chances You're from one there. square away yeah. from being top dog. Yeah. And Matt, congratulations on getting this far. However, you better go and take the fifth seat on the loser's bench. Ladies and gentlemen, Matt. <laughs> Well, Nikki, Nikki, you are this evening's top dog. Yeah! But guess what? <clears throat> Still it's, one more round. Yeah, it's not quite over yet, all right? Oh! You are now playing for $50,000. But there's still time for the losers to take their ultimate revenge by stealing your money and for you to go home with absolutely nothing. But to do it, the losers are going to have to exercise their powers of general knowledge. Nikki, they're a bright bunch. Oh, you don't know? No, there's only two that was really good at general knowledge. So you're feeling confident? Fabulously confident. Well, yeah! well. Walk out of here, fifty thousand dollars richer, or the losers deny Nikki what is rightfully hers. It's unfair. It's tough. It's dog eat dog. Dog eat dog. Dog eat dog. And this is Nikki. She has survived all of this evening's physical and mental challenges, and is our top dog. Nikki is now just one tantalizingly small step away from being $50,000 richer. Nikki, I have here five general knowledge questions, each in a separate category. You don't have to answer them yourself. Instead, for each question, you must decide which of those losers is most likely to get it wrong. If you choose well and they do get the question wrong, you get a point. But if the losers get the question right, they score a point. The first to three points wins. If you win, the $50,000 is yours, all right? Whoa. But if they win, they take your money and they share it amongst themselves, and that's $10,000 each, all right? <laughs> For the final time tonight, let's play Dog Eat Dog. <laughs> the first subject tonight is literature. Who do you think is most likely to get a question on literature wrong? Gab was really good on the away day, but I think Ashley. Ashley, please step forward. <laughs> Your question. The Chamber, The Firm and The Pelican Brief are all novels by which best-selling author? My answer is D.H. Lawrence. You answered D.H. Lawrence. The correct answer is John Grisham. <laughs> Great start, Nikki. Good One work. Me. All right. The next category is sport. Who's the least sporty on the losers bench? Definitely not Teresa. <laughs> Uh, I'd say Gabrielle. Gabrielle, come down here and join us. In which city were the 1988 Olympic Games held? Seoul. You answered Seoul? The correct answer is Seoul. <laughs> All right, Nikki. The losers have one point. You have one. Focused. All right. The next category is music. Who knows nothing about music? Heart's pounding, but I have to say. Teresa. Teresa, please step forward. <laughs> Teresa, you need this point for your share of $50,000. All right? 
Your question is, who is Alton John's longtime musical collaborator? Do you like me to repeat the question? That's okay. Do you need full name? Yes, I need a full name. First name is Bernie. For your share of fifty thousand dollars, I need a full name. What's your answer, Teresa? Struggling Teresa? with the surname at the moment. Okay. I really am struggling. I'm going to have to have a guess. It's Bernie Quiglin. You answered Bernie Quiglin. The correct answer is Bernie Torpin. <laughs> Nikki, how are your nerves? My heart's pounding when they're responding. Breathing in the winning 50,000. All right. Well, why you breathe it in? The next category is film. Out of Ross and Matt. Who is it going to be? It's a tough call. Um, film. I'm going to say Ross. Ross, come and join us. Ross, film. Your share of fifty thousand dollars. Could walk out of here with ten thousand. Nikki could walk out of here with absolutely nothing. All right. Your question. Comic book and silver screen hero. Superman came from which planet? Team are relying on you for this. You're one question down. Comic book and silver screen hero Superman came from which planet? I have to take a guess um, and say Zelda. You answered Zelda? Yeah. The correct answer. Is Krypton. Look at all your fans out there. Nikki, fifty thousand dollars. Yep. What are you going to do with it? I'm going to have a fantastic shopping spree because I started my business last year and it's been a tough year for me. And I'm going to donate $5,000 to Life Skills DNA, which is a kids program that I started up with someone this year. Fantastic. Well done. Nikki, all I can say is you are a fantastic winner. Ladies and gentlemen, Nikki. Well, that, of course, is Dog Eat Dog. Good night, and remember, every dog has its day. I am so excited. I just want to see $50,000 in cash in one spot. Then it's just going to be like, oh, my God. I have to say, I'm, I'm really feeling quite crushed at the moment. I guess I'll wake up tomorrow and look upon it and say I had fun, but at the moment, I just, look, I just can't see past that 50 grand that was sort of right there. Matt didn't like to be beaten, and especially not by a woman. I'm, overall, I'm quite happy because I would have paid ten grand to see both Matt and Theresa fail. Krypton.
Ross Krypton. Uh. Well, I guess what really hurt about Ashley's performance, which was pretty poor overall, was, was the John Grisham question. I mean, what can you say? Bloody John Grisham! I don't know a lot about John Grisham. Literature is never. If it's not on the back of the page of sports or the newspaper, it's not an area that concerns me. There was a lot of this happening tonight. It was my energy twinkle, and it's a $50,000 twinkle.